Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy XIII walkthrough. Uh, we are in Tajin's Tower. I think this is technically the second floor? What's that? Waiting for us, huh? this some kind of trap okay so to continue on it says here you have to complete missions from the three men here him on uh, the second tier, the route to the tower's apex will remain closed until all of the tasks are done. Okay. No big deal. We're all about doing marks, right? And I don't know why I'm... Okay, I guess I really wanted to fight these full sort gladiators really bad. I suppose that was probably a good move. We got a preemptive on them right away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, those things drop like rocks, too. Nice. Alright. Thrust bearing. Okay. Fun. Alright, so uh, on this level, I think there's three of these guys. And uh, basically, they just start missions. Nothing, nothing that we haven't already done. All right, so this one is, what was that, Gel Gelatitan, <laughs> which is, I don't know, pretty awesome name. And, uh, all right, so it looks like we have to go, go this way and up these stairs. Um, these mark missions, you don't have to worry about whether or not, so, okay, there's a, uh, there's an achievement for getting five stars uh, for all the marks. Um, and these, the mark missions in here are kind of strange because I think once you start them, you can't, you can't do them again for a while, or at least, like, maybe until the tower's completely done. So, um, you know, I don't really know why they, why they did that. I guess maybe for storyline type reasons, but, um, you know, I guess don't worry too much if you're not able to... Uh, five star them the first time around because they will uh, that you will be able to complete them again later so you know again just keep that in mind it's not like um, you know you're never gonna be able to do these again uh, I think I five starred all of them on my first time around but uh, um, I, you know it does, again it doesn't really matter it's not something that you really have to worry about but all right so here's Jello Titan um, you know, I don't, I don't feel like you really need to do any sort of, um, you know, shrouds or anything like that. Uh, I don't, I guess I just don't feel like you really do it. Uh, you can, you know, put some, or use Libra a couple of times to get his weaknesses figured out, but even that, I don't know, I didn't really feel like it was all that useful. Now, I think my, um, I think my random instant chain activated there. I guess I could look again after this battle is over, but I feel like it, it went from like halfway there to like boom, full chain gauge. So, I don't know. <coughs> but it looks like we're going to be able to take him down before <coughs> the stagger. Oh yeah, easy. Wow. Alright, so that's that. So, um, again, now, I'm pretty sure that uh, random instant chain activated. And what do we get here? Okay, a speed sash. Those are those are pretty good actually. I like those. Those are good items. I think that's like a I think every time you kill an enemy in battle it gives you a or it recharges an ATB gauge segment. So I don't know, you know. It's really nice if you're fighting multiple enemy enemies, but uh not so much if you're uh not fighting <laughs> multiple enemies. Um but uh the the real reason why I like those though is the um I think actually those will, uh, the speed sash will, uh, 
synthesize that random instant chain uh, ability. So just just keep that in mind. All right, what do we have here? The infernal machine. Uh, the mark is ambling bellows. So this guy will be easy. We've already fought one of those. Okay, on the way, I'll be open to you. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so maybe maybe that's why they don't let you uh, do these missions more than once on your first trip. Just because these guys are kind of like related to the story as well. That's my thought anyway. Alright, let's head back. So I think when the um, the fell sea, let's see if I, yeah, if you notice there, I got close to that statue and it wasn't, uh, we weren't able to interact with it. So that's why I don't think that you can uh, do these mark missions uh, back to back or repeat them uh, on our, on the first trip. Uh, here I actually I actually messed this up now. I'll end up doing, I think I retry this, but we'll see. <laughs> what, what was that? How did that guy spot me? I guess I was extremely close to this. Uh, I think this is a Kryptos. It's like a, basically it looks like a hoplite, but I guess upgraded. And now the problem is uh, being that the mark has been uh, alerted, he's facing us instead of facing away. But I think what I do here is I probably play around with this a little bit and then I decided to uh, uh, restart or retry it. Uh, but anyway, so <clears throat> the the fell sea of this area, actually, it's kind of interesting. He um, blows the hole in the wall and then, you know, there's flames there, I guess, too. And uh, it's kind of interesting because... Obviously, just, uh, you know, being that it's an RPG, they, they force you into the path that you would have to take anyway to to climb up this player, so it's kind of interesting. All right, let's redo this. Um, let me see here if I... I can't tell which way he's facing now. That's kind of a problem. It still actually kind of looks like he's facing us. It's hard to say, though. We'll see what I end up doing here. I, I kind of feel like I really messed up that first time. Oh, no. Uh, we might be... This might be a preemptive now. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we're good. We're fine. So if that happens to you too, you know, make sure you do it like this. And then definitely take down Ambling Bellows first. You really want to get him uh, staggered in launch before he's able to uh, call in more of the Kryptos enemies. And that is going to be easily accomplished. Here, there we go. Oh, okay, so actually we did take down both of the Kryptos guys. And uh, he wasn't even able to summon in uh, more troops because we had him launched. So, Alright, so we got three particle accelerators. Those are very, very good uh, EXP uh, or item experience. Obviously with be or the, them being uh, inorganic materials. And now we've got to take on... This guy's mission. So what do we have next here? <coughs> Kurang, Kurang Dutch. Um, yeah. These guys are a little tougher. Um, or quite a bit tougher. Actually. To be honest. Um, the thing that, the thing that's uh, interesting about this guy, though, and uh, I guess I'd say don't worry too much about uh, getting a five star on them, as uh, this mark and this enemy specifically. Um, actually, I shouldn't say don't worry about not getting a five star. You still want to get a five star on this mission, um, but you know if you're looking for like data log completion, 
Uh, this guy is extremely common later on in the game, and luckily there, I did sneak up on him and get a preemptive right away. So, um, you know, if you're if you're gonna try to shoot for a five star, that's how to do it. Uh, to be honest, this guy is extremely easy if you get a preemptive, and extremely difficult if you don't. You know, he's the he's your typical. I don't know if they're called armadillo or whatever type of enemies there, the ones that you know, are really really high armor. But there you have it. That's the uh, that's the five star. And what's our reward here? Warrior's wristband. Okay, so that's definitely gonna boost boost the character's strength. Uh, I don't suspect I'll be using those, or I don't remember using any for the rest of the game. But you should know what they do. And all right, so now that we've got all three of these missions completed, uh, these warriors somehow are able to make the stone not be on fire. I don't know. <laughs> and here you go. So I'm standing right up next to this uh, uh, this statue, and I'm not able to take this uh, this mark mission again. So. Um, <clears throat> Again, I'm fairly certain that you have to complete the entire tower uh, for these missions to be available again. I'm just, I don't know why I'm cruising through and looking at the data log. This isn't very useful to be doing right now. I tried to do this kind of stuff off screen, but there's the Grangich. That's the guy that we just fought. And again, you don't have to worry about you know, him not being in your... Your data log for the time being because we're going to be fighting a ton more of these later so yeah again I don't I don't know what I was doing here in the data log I guess just kind of looking at what I've got and what I need I'll navigate down these guys are all over the arc alt step so I think way later on in the game like more towards the end I kind of went through the data log and tried to make sure that I, you know, had all the information on everything. And uh, it's it's time consuming. Right, here we go again. Can't take a hint. You're one to talk. The way is open now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Like Vanille even says, thank you. Right back there. Uh, so the fire is gone, so we can continue on. Um, can't remember if there's a... Yeah, there is a treasure sphere at the end of this this little dead end here. So definitely want to go and grab this. And what do we have? Spark plugs. Okay, fun. Alright. And wow, we have got a lot of pulse work are these champions so I suspect this will be a decent amount of CP uh, I don't know if this is a good place to farm or not I, I actually oh gladiators yeah I'm not sure if, you, there, if there's an easy way to uh, respawn them or not but um, you know usually a battle with a bunch of pulse work soldiers are usually fairly profitable um, not only CP wise but you know, again, they're always going to be able, they're, they're always going to be dropping uh, inorganic components. So, <clears throat> you know, could be could be profitable to farm. I just uh, I don't really know if that for, for a fact, uh, one way or the other. Uh, I didn't bother just because um, you know, to be honest, I 
I, I pick, uh, it, it seems like in, in different playthroughs, I, I pick different places to farm. And, um, you know, in this one, it was uh, chapter 9, I farmed a ton. And then, uh, where else did I farm? Well, I guess technically, if you want to go way back, I farmed a lot of shrouds in the the Pulse Vestige, so right at the very beginning of the game, basically. You know, so I farmed there for a bit. And then I guess I farmed Chapter 9. And then, boy, I don't know, I guess... I guess you could say I farmed Batuitus, and here I ran right next to a Treasure Sphere. <laughs> there we go. Smurg. Okay, so that's a weapon for hope, and I believe that is a really good one. If I remember right, that's the one that... Oh, now, let's see here. Let's make sure that I'm not going crazy here. Stifled magic. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so that's not the one I was thinking of. <clears throat> that is his physical-based uh, weapon. Uh, and that actually uh, synthesizes an interesting ability. I think it's uh, ultimate physical. And uh, that, you know, it takes, it takes something like five items to, uh, to synthesize that ability. But um, it can be kind of interesting. At least I think, I think that's the one I'm thinking of anyway. It should be. It should be ultimate physics. And, uh, you know, the, I guess the good thing about it is that um, you can't take any physical damage, but I think that... Gosh, if I remember right, it means that you can't heal with magic, though, too. So, I, I, I don't remember, though. It's, it's, been, it's been so long since I actually, like, tried to synthesize those types of abilities. But, um... Anyways, let's continue on here. <clears throat> uh, I guess I would not recommend, uh, you know, upgrading that weapon, at least not right now. You know, towards the end of the game, once you've got more more cash and, and whatnot, um, you know, then it might not be a bad idea. I mean, one of the, one of the bigger reasons is, to be honest, right now, his, uh, or Hope's, Hope's uh, main claim is that, uh, you know, he's, he's arguably the best healer. Vanille is probably a close second, but he's probably the best. Um, and then his Ravager is really good too, and both of those work off of his magic stat. So, you know, there's uh, <laughs> that weapon's not going to do a whole lot for you uh, for the time being. <clears throat> uh, but anyways, all right, so let's continue on here. We got uh, I don't know, a little bit of CP and oh, and then I forgot. So I was speaking about the the pulse work gladiators downstairs there. And then I didn't look at how much CP we actually got for that battle. I feel like it should be pretty good, though. I mean, I think there was five of them, so... Should be at least somewhat decent. I, but again, I don't know about the whole respawning. That would be the that would be the real issue, I suppose. Uh, and then this statue you just interact with. And uh, he, he opens up another path. Yeah. So he spins the tower... And I think that this is this is such a cool idea, you know, that once you get to a certain po part, then uh, you know the tower actually spins and changes, and opens up. In this case, another another path for another one of these uh, these weird magic I don't know magical elevators or musical elevators. How about that? <clears throat> All right, so the central elevator can now get to the fourth tier. And what do we got here? Yeah, all right, so there's one more. Two more metal armbands? Jeez. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure we just opened up a... Maybe that was in the optional area of Mahabara, but I'm fairly certain we just got two... Two metal armbands out of a different treasure sphere. Uh, but anyways, all right, let's let's stand around and look at some walls for a while. Must have had to take a break. It's the video game players union. We get uh, constant breaks. I got nothing. I don't know. Try to be funny. It just doesn't work. Alright. Let's hop in this 
this elevator here and head up to the fourth floor. I think that uh, these elevators are just so cool. I don't know. Maybe it's the music too? I don't know. If you, <laughs> so if we're going up to the fourth tier from, I think we were at the third, it sure looked like the elevator went up way more floors than... Maybe, maybe, maybe the tower doesn't work the way I thought that it did, but I don't know. Anyways, all right, let's let's keep going. Okay, so here we are on the fourth tier, right? And boy, we get a treasure sphere right off the bat. Very nice. Two glass orbs. They sure sound fun. All right, what do we got here? couple of yakshas and that preemptive means that they are not gonna be living very long and there we go okay so yeah that's that apparently there's no treasure spheres in this room so Let's head up to the fifth tier. Any day. Any day, buddy. Let's keep this walkthrough moving. People got stuff to do. We've got games to play. All right, so this is another one of those um, kind of interesting things about the tower here in that you kind of have to like kind of go off of the main you know the main area and take care of some stuff and then we'll it'll you know activate something for the main elevator so that the main elevator can go all the way to the top so that's kind of how the tower works in a nutshell and what are we doing here okay i don't know why i passed up the statue we definitely are going to have to interact with it could have done that first. Maybe I was trying to go for a preemptive on these guys. I don't know. But failed miserably. Um, so these guys, it's it's really getting to that point where um, it, it seems to it seems to start to not matter who you pick first, or at least for me anyway. Um, just because you know we're able to take these guys down so quickly that. You know, yeah, okay, so he got some debuffs on all the different characters, but it didn't matter because none of the damage-dealing enemies lived long enough to, you know, make use of it. So, I guess food for that. All right, let's, uh... Oh, here's a, here's a treasure sphere back here. And there's the preemptive, very nice. Okay. <coughs> Yakshini. Nine ancient bones. Okay. Fun. Components are always useful, right? And what's this guy gonna do for us? Oh, this is another Mark mission. Okay. <clears throat> Mushusu. Mushusu? I don't know. Am I saying that right? Anyways. Oh, and that respawns these guys here. I forgot about that. <clears throat> so this Mark mission is accompanied by these two uh, Yakshini that we just beat. Uh, now, as far as who to take down first, I would actually say it's probably a better idea to take down the, the Yakshinis first. Um, the Mishutsu is fairly tanky. Uh, and the the other guys are going to obviously be debuffing us. So, I don't know. Well... <laughs> now in second, 
or on second thought, they or that guy did go down pretty quickly, so maybe it just doesn't really matter. I guess, you know, I guess if you have troubles with this fight, then you may want to think about uh, your kill order, but to be honest, this seemed like it turned out fairly okay. I guess we'll see what I get for the, the battle rating, but I feel like it should be fairly decent. Yeah, there's a five star. All right. So yeah, not too difficult. And six moon blossom seeds. Uh, moon blossom seeds can uh, be used as organic materials, I believe, but um, I think they're more useful to just sell straight out. Um, I, if I remember there's something like 6,000 um, 6, gil each or something like that. Or maybe it's only 3,000. I don't remember. It's been a while. But they're worth they're worth a good amount of cash, and I'd say uh, enough cash that they're they, you know they're more useful to sell. Uh, now, I don't remember if there's anything like if we continue kind of the way lightning is facing. Yeah, it must not be. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, oh wait okay wait no so this is a dead end okay so we must have to go the other way yeah. Yeah, the, um, apparently we need to activate something before the, uh, elevator will, will come back this way. Oh, yeah, and the, uh, if you notice there on the mini-map, the, um, the destination marker, uh, is, is on this elevator, so we actually have to go back down to the previous floor. So there must have been something that we activated down there, probably with that last uh, mark mission. So we'll see. We'll see how this uh, how this all turns out. And that's what I was kind of saying about this this uh, area being a little confusing. You know, there's just a lot of travel back and forth between the different floors. You know, like go up or go go off out of the way. You know, then go up a, a flight of stairs or up an elevator, activate something, and then go back. You know, so it can be a little, a little confusing at times. All right, let's see where we can go though now. Oh, looks like we're going past the elevator. Okay, onto the other side. All right, yeah, and we haven't been to this side yet, so. Let's open up this treasure sphere. Uh, Gale ring, okay. And oh, got another treasure sphere over here too. Very nice. And those must be uh, are those Seeth flying over our head there? Yep. Let's take these guys down. <coughs> guys down and okay so now I guess we can go to okay so the elevator on this side of the fourth tier uh, allows us to go all the way up to the sixth tier fun so let's do that let's go there Is this the first time we fought a vampire? Or did maybe we fought vampire in the uh, or some vampire in the uh, 
Mahabara secret area. I'm not sure though. I can't remember if those are vampires down there or if they're taxing. Um, the vampire, if I remember right, is a little beefier though. Yeah, this guy's taking quite a bit more time to beat. And they obviously use days, which is super annoying. Okay, we've got another, um, I think this is another Mark Mid. Yeah, it must be. It sure looks like a, yeah, like a sea of uh, stone. Vitala. Oh, Vitalas are so annoying. <laughs> All right. Any day now, buddy. Let's get this mark started. We got Vitalas to hunt down. There we go. I don't know why I hovered on that for so long. <laughs> I guess that maybe that um maybe the story was so enthralling. Okay, uh, where do we have to go for this one? This is probably one of those like go down to the the lower floor and then we'll probably have to run up because it looks like a, a set of stairs there, right? So we'll see. I'm betting that's what we have to do, though. And we've got a seeth here. Uh, here a seeth, there a seeth. Varko, Varko Laki? I don't know. That's what I'm Seems like a strange about. name. Though that wouldn't be the first enemy that's got a strange name, eh? Hey, comrade? Eh? <laughs> oh, I'm the most annoying ever. All right, so yeah, it's kind of looking like we're going to need to go down down to the previous floor, I think. I don't know. Or wait. Nope. Okay. I think I got it. There, there must be a... Yep. So we'll probably have to interact with this statue here, and then I don't know if it'll like spin, you know, spin the floors and stuff like that so that we can, we can actually get into the area that we need to be at uh, to take down that mark. That's my guess. We'll see how it all... See how it all pans out. <clears throat> Alright, so what are these guys? Chon Chon? That sounds fun. <laughs> More annoying little Seath guys. Alright, here we are. Let's see what this guy does. Don't make me into a liar. Chunk. Alright, alright. It's spinning. Spinning is good. And that's going to complete another elevator path. We can now access the what? I don't I didn't read that fast enough. It did something. And yeah, it looks like we've got an open uh, route to the to the mark. So let's go oh, come on really. Do we really need to fight these? I guess. I guess I need to. <laughs> I like making fun of myself and asking asking uh, questions that I already know the answer to. Rhetorical questions, those are. They're my favorite kind of questions, just an FYI. Just <laughs> no, that's not going to be on the test. Okay. Yeah, that was that was something. Is what that was. <laughs> Okay. Try to avoid him. Try to avoid him, you bozo. There we go. Oh, no! Ah, oh, okay, well. To be fair, he kind of dive-bombed me, so. I don't know that that was... I can't really be mad at myself too much. Just too easy. <clears throat> that <laughs> that Seath was determined to fight me. And here... Oh, no! What? I totally could have avoided this guy. I d it's like I didn't even try. Here's another beefy vampire. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it looks like, all right, so Vanille must have the, she's got haste, as well as the auto faith item. Snow's got, uh, you know, haste as well as auto, auto bravery. And then if I could, if I could take a stab at what items they've got, then I'd say Snow's also got a catalog. Probably a connoisseur's catalog for more rares. And Vanille's probably got the regular collector. Uh, you know, to, to up the rate of obtaining regular items. And then I'm betting Lightning's got the... Oh, boy. I'm bet I'm going to say Aurora Scarf. Um, just so that that... Synth again, you know, reason being is it synthesizes well with the uh, uh, Axis Blade. And then, oh, Unsetting Sun. That looks like a weapon for snow. Oh, I was close. Stagger lock. Okay. Oh, and then I didn't look at what uh, items he had equipped. Anyways. Uh, unsetting Sun, Stagger lock. I don't know, that's okay. Especially if he's uh, in the commando role. Um, but those aren't aren't typically items that I really like that much. Um, but anyway, so lightning. Back to lightning's gear. Um, probably Aurora Scarf. You know, again for the ATD plus uh, uh, ten percent uh, recharge rate there with with uh, combi uh, sorry combined with the Axis Blade, and then Sprint Shoes, and then. Ooh. Actually, I don't know. I don't know about that Aurora, Aurora Scarf. That might not be equipped on her. Because the Sprint Shoes would be doing that already. <clears throat> uh, sprint Shoes plus the Axis Blade is, is going to give her the ATB plus 10%. So actually, it's probably got something else. Like maybe an Energy Sash, you know, or a Speed Sash or something like that. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. That's a, t that's a tough question, actually. Now that I think about it. Because I'm pretty sure she's got the the random chain bonus as well. So that means two of the uh, two of the Gestalt, you know, synthesized uh, family items. So, anyways. Alright, what do we got here? Another treasure sphere. Some goodies. Uh, Libra scope. Okay, lame. Whatever. All right, let's stare at this wall for a little bit in disappointment. We're so disappointed that that was a Libroscope. <laughs> okay, sp Sprint Shoes, Speed Sash, Energy Sash. There you go. I was fairly, fairly close to being right there. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, though. Um... But yeah, so the, the Speed Shoe or Sprint Shoes plus the end Kindler now. That's the upgrade from the Axis Blade, by the way. Um, that The combination of those two will give you the ATB 10% uh, recharge rate. And then the Speed Sash and the Energy Sash are what uh, is giving her the random instant chain. <coughs> okay. Oh, I missed a Treasure Sphere up here. That's what happened. Tears of Woe. Okay, fun. Well, that's why I came back up here. And that's probably what I was doing, looking in the inventory, too. Checking for stuff that I missed. Okay. Oh, wow. What's down here now? Ooh, wow. Okay, so, um, after... Was that a mark? Did we beat a mark down here? And that's why these guys weren't here? That must have been it, huh? I swear, you get up for get up for a second, and all of a sudden the enemies are all different and weird. Uh, anyways, so these guys, you know, once again, you know, Pulse for uh, Gladiators. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, usually decent CP as well as uh, you know inorganic materials. So it might be worth your time to to take these down maybe once or twice. It looked like they they respawn once you go up the up the stairs. So. You know, that's the, that'd be the other good thing about this spot is um, they should be a, a really easy respawn, too. But anyways, I got to cut it here. So uh, this guide was helpful, and hope you guys join me for more. All right, thanks for watching.